Tracy Sable tonight on EWTN News Nightly. Deadly shooting. New developments in the tragedy yesterday at a Christian school in Nashville. CDC report. Analysis of a new study that examines a troubling trend in the maternal mortality rate. Proof of life. What the Ortega regime in Nicaragua is saying about Bishop Rolando Alvarez a big break. Uh, the Vatican museums are helping restore a historic cross destroyed in an earthquake. These stories and more tonight. From EWTN, the Global Catholic Network, this is EWTN News Nightly. Thank you for being with us. Our top story tonight, the head of the Diocese of Nashville is calling for prayers for the victims and families of yesterday's deadly school shooting. Bishop J. Mark Spalding said in part, quote, my heart breaks with the news of the school shooting at Covenant School. A 28-year-old woman who identified as a man killed six people, including three children. Police say the shooter had once been a student at the Christian school and had a detailed plan to carry out the killings. President Joe Biden blames guns for the school shooting and ordered American flags to fly at half staff across the country. White House correspondent Owen Jensen continues our coverage. Owen. Tracy, good evening to you. President Biden issued a proclamation that flags remain lowered until sunset this Friday as, quote, a mark of respect for the victims of the senseless acts of violence perpetrated on March 27th 2023 in Nashville. As President Joe Biden left the White House today for North Carolina, the flag over the White House once again flying at half staff. And on the South Lawn, the president called for more gun control. Well, I can't do anything except plead with the Congress to act reasonably. In Tennessee, a makeshift memorial outside the Covenant School, stuffed animals, balloons, and a cross adorned with flowers. Earlier today, the White House press secretary also addressed the slaughter at the Christian School. Our hearts go out to the families uh, and the friends of, 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 uh, of these families who lost loved ones. Uh, again, another devastating, heartbreaking day that we saw. At this time, it happened in Nashville, uh, Tennessee. Police say the transgender killer was born a girl but used male pronouns. The victims, three nine-year-old children, the school's top administrator, a substitute teacher, and a custodian. Later in Durham, North Carolina, President Biden visited a semiconductor company pumping up his investing in America agenda. But first, remember the shooting victims in Nashville. As a nation, this is not hyperbole, as a nation we owe these families more than our prayers. We owe them action. Later in the same speech at Wolf Speed Inc. with union workers behind him, the president talked up his legislative victories like the CHIPS Act. It's a plan to invest in America. Invest in Americans, give them opportunity, invest in ourselves. But the GOP recently tweeted, inflation is surging, the banks are in crisis, and the economy is on life support. But Biden still wants to enact $4.7 trillion in new taxes. Meanwhile, during a week-long trip to Africa, Vice President Kamala Harris pledged a new era of partnership and innovation that includes women. And when we lift up the economic status of a woman, let's be clear. We lift up the economic status of her children, her family, her community, the entire economy benefits. Back to Nashville now. Authorities say the shooter did target the school, possibly, possibly due to some resentment for having to go there. We're also told the shooter did not go after, did not target any specific people. At the White House, Owen Jensen, EWTN News Nightly. Well, the Easter rush is in full swing on Capitol Hill. A two-week break starts in just a few days. But House Republicans hope to have their energy package passed before they leave. In the Senate, they are moving to repeal a 20-year authorization for the Iraq war. And lawmakers must also increase the debt ceiling soon. Capitol Hill correspondent Eric Rosales has the latest. Eric. That's right, Tracy. The rush is on to get a lot of things done. All the behind the scenes action right now centers about the debt ceiling. Both sides have dug in in the House and, uh, excuse me, Democrats in the White House. Well, they want a nose frills uh, spending limit uh, passed. Well, the House Republicans, they're demanding some budget cuts be made first. Speaker Kevin McCarthy says he's ready to talk with President Biden about the debt ceiling. However, he's had no phone call returned from the White House.
I have been waiting to get the table the entire time. Unfortunately, the president doesn't think it's important. He's really jeopardizing the financial um, markets of America by his activity. The Treasury Department estimates the country could default by mid-June unless Congress acts. House Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries is urging the speaker to drop his demands. It's time for the extreme MAGA Republicans in the House to come together with everyone else in the Capitol and the administration to do what's necessary to raise the debt ceiling. House Republicans are eager to pass their energy package, which will increase fossil fuel production and make the U.S. less vulnerable on foreign oil. But leader Chuck Schumer says it's dead on arrival. H.R. 1 will lock America into the most expensive and volatile dirty sources of energy, will set America back a decade or more in our transition towards clean, affordable energy. The package is a wish list for big oil question that's got to be asked, uh, whether it's Chuck Schumer in the Senate or President Biden in the White House, is why would they want to be dependent on foreign countries like Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Russia for our energy when we can make it here better than anybody else in the world? Meanwhile, the Senate is expected to repeal the presidential war authorization for Iraq. We went to war against a nation first to push their troops out of Kuwait. That mission was accomplished. And then to topple the government of Saddam Hussein in 2002. That mission was accomplished. The enemy against whom we declared war in 91 and 02 is no more. Well, getting back to the House energy package right now, it just doesn't have the votes in the Senate. And as you heard from Senator Schumer, it is dead on arrival. President Biden has already said that he does plan to veto it if it does make it to its desk. At the Capitol, Eric Rosales, EWTN News Nightly. Okay, thank you, Eric. Well, a recent CDC report reveals the United States maternal death rate spiked during the pandemic, hitting black women especially hard. More than 1,200 American women died while pregnant or in the month following their pregnancies in the year 2021, a 40% increase from the previous year, making 2021 one of the worst years in U.S. history for maternal mortality rates. And joining us tonight to discuss is Dr. Christina Francis, CEO of the American Association of Pro-Life OBGYNs. Dr. Francis, great to be with you. Um, a pretty alarming statistic here. Your thoughts, are you surprised by this? Well, you know, in a way I am, because of course in the U.S. we have uh, an excellent healthcare system, but it's also not that surprising given the fact that it continues a trend that we have seen over the last several years of increasing maternal mortality rates, which really are um, a blight for this country. I mean, they really are embarrassing given the fact that we do have such great access to medical care in this country. We really should be doing better for women especially black and minority women. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, the rates for uh, maternal mortality for black women were, were significantly higher, also for Hispanic women as well. Do we know why that is and what can be done to change those outcomes? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, black and other minority women experience um, not only death from pregnancy-related causes, but complications in their pregnancies at a much higher rate than, than especially white women. And again, this needs to be addressed. We need to be looking at root causes. We do know that there's a lot of preventable causes of these deaths. And of course, I know we're gonna talk about the, the fact that abortion is often offered as a solution, but it really isn't. What women need actually is access to good prenatal care so that those complications can be detected early and can be treated and managed well. We need to be working on decreasing cesarean section rates, which also contribute to maternal mortality, as well as controlling chronic health conditions before women become pregnant. Dr. Francis, do we know how the U.S. stacks up against other countries when it comes to uh, maternal mortality rates? Yes, we do. So when you look at high-income countries, the U.S by far has the worst maternal mortality rates. We really are not doing a good job for women in taking care of them during their pregnancies. And as you said, in the time following, which actually is when a lot of maternal deaths occur, is in that six week period following um, their delivery, as well as even sometimes up to a year following their delivery. These are crucial times for women to be receiving care that oftentimes they're not receiving right now. I want to pivot here just for a moment. Uh, we mentioned abortion, and I want to read a statement from the American College of OBGYN, OBGYNs, that is, in response to the CDC study, they said, quote, the worsening U.S 
maternal mortality rate cannot be addressed without addressing how each American can access safe abortion care if and when they need it. Um, Dr. Francis, your reaction to this statement? Yeah, well, you know, unfortunately, this kind of statement from the American College of OBGYNs doesn't surprise me. It continues their trend of pushing abortion at the expense of women's health. What we see actually is over the last few years, again, we've seen maternal mortality rates continue to increase, especially in black women, along with an increase in the number of abortions within the same population. So obviously, increasing access to abortion does not improve maternal mortality rates. In fact, we see a correlation of increasing abortions and increasing mortality. And this is borne out in studies done in other countries as well, which have shown that abortion actually has um, up to a four times higher mortality rate than having a full term delivery. And so, you know, we at APLOG have continuously called and continued to call for ACOG to really um, discuss these issues, discuss realistic solutions for women. You know, women deserve real solutions for their health care to prevent deaths from, from preventable causes related to childbirth. They don't deserve Band-Aids, which is what abortion is. It's just throwing a Band-Aid on a situation and it's not fixing the cause. Dr. Francis, we have about 30 seconds left or so, but final thoughts. Yeah, well, you know, again, I would just emphasize that I think that my patients, that that women and their children deserve excellent health care, and these numbers are appalling. Those of us taking care of women in America should be ashamed of these. It's time for us to come together at the table and do the very hard work of fixing the root cause of this problem so that women and their children can flourish. Dr. Francis, thank you so much. Always great to get your insights. We appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much. You as well. And we have a lot more still to come here on EWTN News Nightly, including Proof of Life, an update on a Catholic bishop jailed by the Ortega regime in Nicaragua, and why a so-called Christian board game that's being sold on Amazon contains content worrisome to the faithful. Group supportive of the Ortega regime shared video footage of imprisoned Nicaraguan bishop Rolando Alvarez. He is seen sharing a meal with his siblings during one of their visits to the prison. However, the auxiliary bishop of Managua claims that the video was staged, calling it repugnant and cynical. That particular prison is known for daily psychological and physical torturing of inmates. Also in Nicaragua, hundreds of Catholics took part in one of the last remaining religious processions authorized by the Ortega regime. Despite other crackdowns from the Ortega regime, this group traveled southwest to visit the Shrine of Christ the Redeemer. In preparation for Holy Week, the persecuted Catholics pray for God to chase away any bad spirits. At least 40 people are dead after migrants started a fire at a detention center in Mexico. The refugees being housed in a building near the U.S. border feared being deported. So. They lit mattresses on fire, starting a blaze that got out of control. At the time of the tragedy, dozens of men from Central and South America were being held at that facility. Well, Russia's military is conducting drills in the Sea of Japan. The Kremlin has released footage of the launch of anti-ship missiles. The missiles are capable of flying at three times the speed of sound and have both conventional and nuclear warhead capability. On a different note, a board game sold on Amazon, the online shopping giant, claims to let people communicate with God. But as one exorcist warns, it is extremely dangerous and could lead to the exact opposite outcome. The so-called Holy Spirit board is similar to a Ouija board, but it is advertised as a Christian religious talking board and comes complete with a so-called magic cross to spell out messages and displays artwork of the crucifixion, angels, and a dove. And joining us with more details on this is Father Ernesto Caro, exorcist in the Diocese of Monterey, Mexico. Father, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, I know that you've been really outspoken about this matter. For those who are not familiar, can you tell us more about this board game and why it's simply not a game. Yes, yeah, so it's not a game, it's a trap from the devil. It's, uh, well, uh, the devil is always uh, looking for a different ways that 
can trap all the victims that he can take for him. And this is one, because he just uh, now changed the Ouija board and put just the images that we use naturally as the, cru the, the, the crucifix and all these, the angels and other, another different elements that we are now familiarized with this. And the people could think that could it be something that the, that the church or uh, a God, uh, it's, uh, it's giving us the chance to communicate with him through this Ouija board that is just called the Holy Spirit board. Uh, as we said uh, before in, uh, in the commentaries that I saw in Amazon, most of the people, I think that they are Christians because uh, some of the commentary says, uh, finally, I can communicate myself with him. And I have, I am receiving, they said, I'm receiving a quick answer from him. So I was trying to speak with him for, for, for time and uh, never he never answers me. So uh, this is the trap. Uh, the people, as, as I said in my commentary in Spanish, uh, the people wants that to be here and respond uh, at the same time in online as we are now customized to do. Usually we have to do. So now we are in uh, online and we are speaking here from Monterrey <clears throat> and you're in, in the Z. Then uh, I think that it's in a very, very, uh, um, uh, I'll say, it's something that you, if you are not familiarized with this, it's easy that you uh, be catched by this trap, because you will see if you see this in in the in the uh, in Amazon that is advertising this this uh, this board, you will you will think that could it be a, something good, and then you read the commentaries and said, wow, let me try it, and you will be trapped. Yeah, it is very uh, all these all these things in the Bible is uh, forbidden. So all is called now the games, the um, wishing games, and all these are forbidden in the, in the Bible. This is a very good trap because it's just under the cover of, of and a very beautiful, beautiful board, but it's a trap. So we have to be careful. That's why as soon as I be advertised of this, advice of this, I immediately uh, look on, the, on Amazon and read the commentaries and see, in fact, if you see them the, in, in Amazon, this board is sold with, you, you know, Amazon always promote another uh, articles that they are similar. Said, you can buy this also with this, a widget board. <laughs> so it's in a very stupid trap, but many people could be catch. So I try to advertise to all, advise all the all the Catholics or Christian, even Christians, all the Christians that could be trapped using the Ouija board or this board that is the same, you are opening a door that could be dangerous for you. You would probably think that it's God who is talking with you, but it's not. If the if the Ouija board, if the the triangle is moving by itself, be careful. Yeah. It's not God who is moving. Yeah. It's the devil. If this is true, is the devil who is moving this thing. Father, this is all very disturbing. It's deceptive. We're almost out of time, but I want to ask you this. If somebody purchased this, um, think because they were deceived, they thought, okay, maybe I could do this. Besides getting rid of this, is there anything else that they should do? I think that it's very important or be convenient that be confess of this. He didn't know about that, but However, my my counsel will be, I don't know if all the priests are not very famili familiarized with this, but if it is possible that the, that the priest, even, even out of the confession, just pray for liberation. Say, God, liberate this, this guy, this, this girl, from, from all the influences that could be done by this, by this board. It will be the better thing, but just renouncing to this and the 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 idea is to burn out the 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 board because if not it could be catched by another people so just repent and ask the god for liberation it's something that everybody can do if it's done by a priest or some other that could be done for for this for who is asking for it 
I think that we do the better thing. But however, God knows us. Now you are advertised, you are advised of this. So take care and renounce and board it. The, the board, the, the board. Well, Father, I wish we had more time to talk about this, um, but we're running out of time. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about this. this is so important. We appreciate it. God bless you. No, I, ble I bless the Lord for you because you are now putting this in, in the mind of many people because you are in a very important net in this in, in, in the country. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Father. Up next on EWTN News Nightly, a fitting end. The Vatican Museums are asked to put the pieces back together of a beloved artifact destroyed in a 2016 earthquake. Welcome back. More than 10,000 people are expected at the statewide Eucharistic Congress in New York this fall. The head of the Diocese of Albany says that he is looking forward to the, quote, historic three-day event, adding that it will be a time to renew our faith in Christ and share that faith with others. Well, finally, tonight, a new exhibit at the Vatican Museums takes a closer look at the restoration of a cross that was destroyed in an earthquake in central Italy back in 2016. EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief Andreas Tonhauser had the opportunity to interview Barbara Giada, the director of the Vatican Museums, and brings us this report. Why did you choose to do an exhibition on this cross? What makes it so special? Uh, is uh, the Crocifisso di Sant'Eutizio is uh, very special for many, many reasons. It, it, it's, um, it's a cross that was totally destroyed during the heartbreak of 2016 in the Umbria region, in the, in the Valnerina, which is, a, which is a little valley close to Spoleto, between Spoleto and Perugia, and it was totally destroyed. It arrived to us uh, thanks to the Archbishop of um, Spoleto Norcia, Monsignor Renato Boccardo, uh, uh, cut in 30 pieces. Amazing, incredible, incredible, uh, and uh, un a mission impossible, <laughs> I would say. And with, uh, really, with the heart and the hands, the professional hands of our uh, restorers, not only the painting restorers, but before the, the wood, uh, restorers, uh, we were able in a long uh, time period to to give it back, uh, uh, to give it back to the community now with this exhibition uh, and our visitors, but then to the local community of uh, Umbria region. And it's a wonderful piece of art, and, and I understand this is not the only piece of art that the Vatican Museums are restoring. Of course not. This is a, an exceptional uh, um, project. Uh, in general, we do restore only um, objects and arts, artifacts that are coming from our collections. And I mean, we have so many that uh, we are not going to look <laughs> to other other dioceses or other other museums in, in um, worldwide uh, uh, collections, but. This was a special occasion and really was the will of Pope Francis, was the will of the Cardinal President of the Governorate to give a sign uh, to the people and to the territory that was totally, totally uh, destroyed during the heartbreak of 2016. And the cross is, is also a symbol. And so we choose this cross that was uh, incredibly destroyed uh, as a symbol of uh, uh, of uh, reconstruction as a symbol uh, as a symbol of hope and what heart and hands can do the cross as a symbol of hope uh, pope francis we're celebrating these days, days his 10th anniversary as a pope as a pontiff and uh, he's also present in this exhibit with a wonderful quote uh, saying that it takes all our hands uh, to give hope and to restore exactly uh, we mm, this is a a, a, a a room of the painting gallery of the of the Vatican Museum in which we generally exhibit what is behind the scenes. We give word and we give a vision to our visitors to to really what what uh, is behind the scenes. What are the the department work? What are the laboratory work? And but they're always always in the name of the heart of the faith 
and the hands, so the work itself. So um, this room number 17 of the painting gallery is really, in a way, the, um, the room of art and work. Dr. Yatta, thank you so much. Thank you for your time and for this wonderful exhibit of a beautiful cross that is really a symbol of hope. And we thank EWTN Vatican Bureau Chief Andreas Tonhauser for that report. And we thank you for watching tonight. Remember, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at EWTN News Nightly. I'm Tracy Sable. Good night and God bless.